The Mazda MX-5 is the world's most popular roadster. And now, here is the fourth generation model which interestingly is actually lighter and smaller than the 1989 original. It's a lot safer and better equipped. In all but the entry level model, you get Mazda's infotainment system and you can control it with this swivel wheel or if you prefer, you can use it as a touch screen. You can also upgrade it to navigation. There we go. However, the sweet spot in the range for me is the SEL. So that upgrades your normal air conditioning to climate control. Also includes Bluetooth and digital radio as well. Now, while this new MX-5 may have the latest technology, Mazda have resisted over complicating the roof. I mean, it's still manual, but look how easy it is to put up. <laughs> Super quick. The MX-5 uses that classic front-engined rear drive layout and it's always been brilliant to drive. And this new one, yeah, this new one's probably the best yet. And part of the reason for that is the lightness. So the entry-level car is actually less than a ton and that means it feels nice and agile and nimble. And it also has enabled Mazda to fit the car with relatively supple suspension. And as a result, it's surprisingly comfy. And another advantage of the lightness is that it helps economy. This car, for instance, I'm averaging 42.4 miles per gallon, which is pretty good for a sports car. With the roof up, the MX-5 is reasonably quiet. And with it down, you can enjoy wind and the hair thrills without feeling like you're driving in a gale. Then there's the wonderful steering, the brilliant brakes, and that trademark Mazda MX-5 snickety gearbox. I mean, manual gearboxes like this make me think that automatics, they should be outlawed. You can get the MX-5 with two engine choices and they both have their merits. The car was actually built around Mazda's new 1.5 litre petrol engine and in many ways, it suits it best. It sounds great, it loves to rev, which on the right roads adds to the fun. However, some people may find it lacks a bit of in-gear punch and for them, there's a two litre. The 2.0-litre benefits from bigger brakes, a front strut brace and a limited slip differential for improved traction. The 2.0-litre actually only costs £850 more than the 1.5. But I say, if you're going to go for that engine, you may as well go the whole hog and get this 2.0-litre sport model. Because this is the only car in the range that gets stiffer suspension. Now, the problem with that is that you probably noticed the camera's bouncing about all over the place. So, yes, the ride isn't as comfy, but... The car does handle better, it stops the body roll, and it actually makes this MX-5 feel a bit like a convertible Toyota GT86. So rather than being a cheeky little roadster, which is what the 1.5 is, this two litre Sport is more like a proper sports car. Though, if you're into straight line performance, you're probably gonna to wanna to look elsewhere anyway, because the MX-5, it's more about going around corners quickly and having fun than outright speed. However, front wheel drive hot hatches like the Ford Fiesta ST are also loads of fun and a lot faster. Plus their boots are considerably bigger than the MX-5s. Then there's the in-car storage, which isn't great even by sports car standards. So where's my glove box? Yeah, I uh, don't seem to have one. Instead, Mazda have given us this little, this little cubby there. That's, yeah, that's great. And Oh, you do get another one under your arm here, but it's only just about big enough to hold a mobile phone. And then what about when you want to put your bottle of drink somewhere? So where's the cup holders now? Yeah. Oh yeah, you get these detachable cup holders which you have to fit and then you can plonk your drink in there and it blocks that. That's, that's brilliant. So too is the fact that while I can move the steering wheel up and down, which is good, I can't move it in and out, which is annoying. And then if you're really tall, you might struggle in this car because I'll just pop the roof back up. You will see that Yes, well, it's pretty snug in here. And then when you have the roof up, you'll notice that there is, well, there's a bit of a blind spot over your shoulders there. And well, it can be a little bit of a leap of faith when you're putting out at junctions. Still, if you're buying a roadster, you kind of accept that you're gonna to have to make some compromises. And really, this is a great car that's worth making a few compromises for, because it's so much fun to drive, yet it's brilliant value as well. But if you've got a bit more cash, you might want to go a bit more upmarket and check out our review of the Audi TT Roadster by clicking down here. Or if you don't like convertibles but still want driving thrills, then how about the Toyota GT86, which you can watch our review of by clicking down here. If you click up here, you can watch our very latest video review and please click on our logo to subscribe to our channel. And if you watch on mobile, click the links below the video as they do exactly the same thing. Now, a lot of people actually ask me, what car I drive? Well, do you know what? 
I've got an MX-5. Unfortunately, it's not this new one. It's an old Mark II, but I have supercharged it. And so it's as fast as a Porsche Boxster.